This is All's Fair by Non Pencil, written with and mostly by Skittle Tits, who's only here to ruin your day. Warning This story contains things that will ruin your day. Description No one knows how long the battle has raged, and no one know how many countless have died. She only knows that she has lived, and so has her love, shining armor. Even when amidst the blood, carnage, and sorrow, their passion flickers to life and begins to burn. From soft touches and lustful glances, something more emerges between them, and they're helpless to it. It feels so surreal, so dreamlike. But who cares? They're here, together, and nothing else could possible matter, right? All's fair in love and war. That's all. This is tagged for sex, gore, fetish, and death. Bloodlust has a whole new meaning. Author's note. So, one night, Skittle Tits and I got drunk. I told her, right you bitch! And then she said something similar to me, with more obscenities. So we got drunk and wrote. The resulting story is what I have posted here. It is by far the single most purple, horrible, autistic thing I have ever had a hand in creating. It has dead bodies, blood, sex, the works. But the credit really goes to her. She's the mastermind behind this tale of love, lust, pink, and ultimate betrayal. I can already tell you, this isn't going where you think it's going. Prepare to be disappointed. I'm so, so proud of her. See you in the angry comments section. Pencil. It was finally over. She didn't know how long had passed, how many days, hours, how many countless deaths surrounded her, but she could feel hanging heavy in the air that this was all finally through. What mattered now was that she was alive and that she was okay. But what of him? She felt a tightness in her throat that at the very thought of him being dead. But she tossed her pink head. No. He wouldn't go down so easy. He had fight in him yet, even after a battle as this. Even after such a battle as this. The straps were tight around her barrel, legs, and haunches, restricting the normal bounce and sway of her fur. She could feel the sweat clinging to her, matting down her coat and forming rivulets on her legs and face. She squinted through the stinging dew of exertion that leaked into the corners of her eyes as she scanned the horizon for him. It felt like an eternity before she finally saw movement. A soft, ah, left her lips as she ca he came into view, her shining armor. The battle with the changeling queen had raged viciously, but every time she'd seen his white coat, her courage had blossomed, and she dove into the fray, renewed. His eyes, burning with battle fury, had ignited her body in ways she never would have imagined amidst all the death and mayhem. Now, the great battle for Canterlot showed only in ruins, scars across the earth, and the survivors that were left to pick up the pieces. The usual light pink of her fur was now tinged with the red of her foe's blood, and R Shining had stripes of the same mar color marring his body in haphazard splashes and splatterings. Still, it did nothing to detract from his majesty and allure. She had trotted forward, his eyes drawing her to him like a moth to the flame. He watched her, approached with a single-minded intensity in his expression that excited her. A low ache began in her belly, a warmth that was quickly easing the cold grip of the horrors of battle. It flowed through her being it flowed through her being to her most intimate and personal parts. Hesitantly, she reached out and touched her muzzle to his, and sighed with the pressure of his smooth, velvety nose. The wicked gleam in his eyes at her touch, and his body pressed against hers, the crushing her cotton-candy fur, made the low ache roar into a hungry churn of need. She wasn't sure what was happening with her. This was all so new to her, the desire combined with the actor effects of war. It should have been horrifying, but instead she felt nothing but intrigue and want. 
something thick and hard brushed against her hind legs as they circled each other, nosing and silently touching each other's bodies, and she inhaled sharply at the new contact. Was this happening? Was Shining interested in her now, like this? The war with the changelings had left the two of them alone when the queen had killed Celestia, so sorrow should have been the only thing between them then. But there was so much more. She just felt so alive. He pressed her flanks briefly, an invitation and a request. Was this for real? The better question was, did she care? This was shining armor. He would never do an act like this with someone he wasn't in love with. And even if the time and place felt strange, it also felt right, like this was faded somehow. In that instant, her decision was made. She pressed against his hard body and was rewarded with his shaft, making firm contact with her quivering flanks through de her dense fur. A slight shift of her hips, and she felt the flared tip make contact with the center of her desire. Her nostrils flared, and a throaty, ah, escaped her as the thick length pressed slowly deeper. She smelled him his warm, battle-sullied scent invading her body and mind as f hips flexed and eyes rolled. The pounding of her heart was echoed in the pounding of his fierce thrusts, each blood-boiling pulse bringing her inches closer to fulfillment. His hardness filled her with joy, and she knew that he was close too by the way he was beginning to throb within her. She tossed her head and glimpsed, and caught a glimpse of his eyes, shining with lust and joy as they spiraled higher and higher into ecstasy together. The strokes became rougher, wilder, losing their refinement as flank slapped lathered flank. She could feel it building inside them, in her stomach, her mouth, her entire body. She knew they were together at last, that they were one, that she was his, and he was finally hers. It felt so much like a dream then, a fantasy, but she pushed the thought away. A fantasy, a dream, who cared? The pleasure was overwhelming. She felt her breaths coming quick and shallow, and she felt a squeal of light, delight building inside her. Yes, that's it, right there, almost there. She was going to... Flufflepuff! The strident voice cut through the frantic swirling fog of fantasy and narrative that filled her head, but she couldn't stop. Neither of them could. This was the start of something. Queen Chrysalis stared in shock at the scene she had stumbled upon. In the heart of the battlefield, she spied movement and had landed to inspect it, but nothing could have prepared her for the horror that awaited her. Flufflepuff stood among the dead, straps encasing her hindquarters. She was staring into he distance, tongue dangling, looking a million miles away, as if she had written a scene for herself in her head and was playing it out mentally to the last detail. At first, it looked like she was trying to shove the gore-smeared body, trying to move the gore-smeared body, but upon closer inspection, Chrysalis saw the heavily silicone shaft buried deep inside of Princess Shining Armor's decapitated corpse. The dead stallion's eyes were cloudy in death on his severed head, which lay a few feet away, but Flufflepuffs were gleaming with satisfaction and whimsy. What have you done? Chrysalis asked, her voice even and tight. Flufflepuff had come back to herself, and smiling, turned her attention to the queen. The fluffy ball of pink fur sighed and pulled out of Shining Armor's body with a loud sucking noise, and Chrysalis shuddered at the blood and filth covering the silicone dong. The pink pony smiled wider and stuck out her tongue, then began scribbling in the dirt. She drew a picture of her, and then Shining Armor minus a head, then encircled the two figures in a heart. The queen watched in dismay and horror. Then Fufflepuff had finished. She gave a little, ah! and then bounced away, leaving the new queen of Canterlot with the decapitated and violated corpse of the deposed prince. Such is life, such is war.